He appears to have been rather short haired. Not necessarily. See, he's built himself a story on very few facts. Flimsy, actually. Excuse me a moment. Oh, what a lovely surprise. Are you here on my behalf? Listen, it would solve a lot of my problems if you were convicted. You have one weakness. Look at me. You're unable to lie. Do you, do you believe I committed this crime? I'm not clairvoyant. Yes, but you are intelligent. And you know very well why I returned to Bay City. You know how determined I've been to win back Ryan's affections. Do you really think I'd cut pictures out of the newspaper, that I'd blow up cars? Yes, you might. And you might use this very argument in your defense. But why? I mean, what could I possibly gain by harassing Kevin Anderson? I mean, think about it. When have I ever done anything without a clear and profitable purpose? Yes, you believe me. Well, she does not share your convictions. Well, not to worry. The American judiciary has always been very good to me. And here comes our assistant, ready to do battle. Not with you in my corner. All rise. Are we ready, Mr. Anderson? Yes, Your Honor, the state is ready. And it would appear that Mr. Hutchins has obtained counsel. Yes, indeed, Your Honor. It's good to be before you again. Uh, Mr. Cameron will be representing. Shall we waive the preliminaries, Miss Cameron? Unless, of course, Mr. Hutchins would like to enter a guilty plea. On the contrary. In fact, Your Honor, we respectfully request that you dismiss the state's allegations against my client for a lack of evidence. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, let me be perfectly clear. I will have order in my courtroom. Thank you. Mr. Cameron thinks that you don't have a case, Mr. Anderson. Well, Mr. Cameron is optimistic. All right. I guess we have to do this the hard way. In the matter of the state versus Carl Hutchins, state your case, Mr. Anderson. Yes, Your Honor. The state will prove that on the 17th day of the present month, Mr. Hutchins did willfully and with malicious intent I go back to Bay City, they're going to put me in jail. Oh, I'll get you out. We'll get that lawyer back, Mark Cameron. I'll pay him this time. He'll get you out and of And what this. am I supposed to do? Prune shrubs for the rest of my life? You can do anything you want. I can't let go yet. I... Ian, you have to let it go. There's nothing left to hold on to. The only way to honor your father's memory is to not waste your life by running. You've been through this before. Yeah, I know, but I don't remember all the technical stuff. That's why I'm here. In a no-fault situation, we file for a separation, and then we meet with an arbitrator to negotiate a settlement. How long does that take? Six months after you file for a divorce. Wait a minute, so you mean by the spring I could be free? Will you slow down for a second? I want you to consider all of your options. Yeah, no-fault has a lot to recommend it, but you could also sue Grant for divorce, and that would give you a lot more leverage. You know, we could go someplace else. I won't be chased out of a restaurant by my wife and her attorney. They're discussing the divorce. Good. The sooner you put this behind you, the better. It's inevitable. Don't fight it. Nothing is inevitable. What are you saying? Grant, you don't have time for lost causes. You have a Senate race coming up. You've been neglecting your constituents. There's nothing left in your war chest. I'm aware of my responsibilities. Now, what are you going to do? I'm going to speak to my wife. Carl Hutchins planted an explosive device in an automobile in the municipal parking lot. That device detonated, destroying the car and injuring two persons. 
one seriously. We know the charge. Can you back it up? Yes, Your Honor. We recovered a pen with Mr. Hutchins' fingerprints at the site of the explosion. Objection! That's inadmissible. The municipal lot is a public lot, as Mr. Anderson knows. Now, if Mr. Anderson wants to place my client at the scene, well, he'll need more than a pen that could have dropped at any time in the past month. What else do you have, Mr. Anderson? Mr. Anderson? Yes, Your Honor. Mr. Hutchins made his intentions known on several previous occasions. He had been harassing the young woman who was involved in the explosion. Again, Your Honor, the prosecution is making allegations that he has no proof she of. She can testify to that effect. In addition, I was threatened by Mr. Hutchins. Objection! If the prosecution is referring to the newspaper he brandished on television in his campaign for chief... I object, Your Honor! So do I. I won't tolerate showboats. Do you understand, Mr. Cameron? Yes, Your Honor. You can prove that this threat came from Mr. Hutchins? Yes, Your Honor. After obtaining a search warrant, an officer and myself went over to Mr. Hutchins' home, where we found a newspaper that matched the clipping that was sent to me in the mail. I assume that forensic supports this contention. Yes, sir. I'm sorry, Mr. Cameron, but I'm going to uphold the prosecution and bind Mr. Hutchins over for trial. I also request that Mr. Hutchins be held in lieu of bail. Mr. Hutchins is a man of considerable means and very few ties to the community. And seeing that the charges are grave, harassment, assault, attempted murder... He's lying! <laughs> Carl Hutchins is innocent, and Kevin Anderson knows the truth. <laughs> Silence! Silence! <clears throat> I don't know who you are, young man, but you're out of order. You're on. As it's our contention that Mr. Hutchins is being framed, we must insist that this individual's statement be taken. No, that is completely out of the question, Your Honor. Excuse me, Mr. Anderson. While I appreciate your zealous defense of my courtroom, I will decide who speaks. Sidebar, Judge. Look, I know this individual. I prosecuted him for possession and sent him up for several years. This has nothing to do with Carl Hutchins and his pathetic attempt to embarrass me in court. Your Honor, we'd be willing to hear his testimony in chambers if Mr. Anderson here fears public humiliation. He has no evidence. All right, gentlemen, I've heard enough. I'll hear this witness. He is not a witness. Mr. Anderson. I'm sorry, Your Honor, but this individual knows nothing about this case, and it would be completely inappropriate to wa waste the court's time with a personal vendetta. I've made my decision. But if it is wrong, please, judge, this case is high profile enough. Don't make it any worse than it is. Mr. Anderson, if you don't sit down and shut up, I will find you in contempt. What's going on? I don't really know, except for the fact that I think your brother's case is about to be blown out of the water. All right, young man. Yes, sir. I didn't mean to, um interrupt but he gave me no choice your name victor rodriguez mr rodriguez i understand you've had the occasion to appear in court before yes i have do you understand the seriousness of these proceedings yes i do and i didn't want to do this but he gave me no choice i mean he's in, he's in trouble your honor i mean he's got himself in real deep but, your honor this is a travesty but you're the travesty my friend you're the one who's been harassing more now. Objection, Your Honor. This is clearly a personal attack. On the contrary, Your Honor, Mr. Rodriguez here seems to be substantiating my client's innocence. Silence. Silence. Mr. Rodriguez, do you understand the seriousness of perjury? I'm telling the truth, Your Honor. Kevin Anderson has been harassing Lorna from day one. He also hired an explosives expert to take out his own car. No, you have no proof, Victor! And I will testify if you can guarantee him protection, Your Honor. There are some things you might want, your suede jacket. Right. I'll have Alistair pack them up and, and bring them over to your house, or you can stop by... No, 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 Washington. that's all right. Um, Alistair can handle it. Good. 
I'll see you. He's fine, Grant. He really loves that little dog. I'm glad to hear it. It's always good to see you, Cass. You too, Grant. Take care of yourself, Victoria. Yeah. What was that all about? I am not sure. And he was nice. He's a politician. You know, Ryan told me that he was always like that. I mean, when he was a little kid, he never let anything get to him. And if it did, he certainly never let it show. He used to drive me crazy. Sometimes I would find myself just doing stuff to get some kind of a reaction out of him. Oh, he reacts. Look at the lengths he went to when he felt threatened by Ryan. The thing is, he gives you no warning. Well, I don't care. As long as it's over and he's not my problem anymore. I just want the simplest and the quickest way out of this thing. Okay, we go no fault. Fine, great, no fault, whatever. Just file the papers as soon as you can. <laughs>